Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome to my favorite video of the month, my BoxyCharm unboxing for the November box for my PR. I have had the opportunity a few days to try some of the things behind the scenes, but earlier in the month what I like to do with my PR boxes is do a first impressions video with you guys to let you know what are my thoughts and do a little get ready with me because I also have my paid for boxes coming my way. I think actually one is going to deliver today. I'm so excited because I'm trying to remember what one of my choice items was, but when I went back to my emails to see if it was in there, it was like blank. There was nothing listed in text or pictures. So I'm hoping I remember correctly from a month ago, but I don't really remember what I had for lunch yesterday. So super excited for all of the BoxyCharm videos this month because it's kind of a surprise to me too. And as you guys know, we have been definitely wanting to see how BoxyCharm is going to start upping their game in this last quarter of the year and into 2022. So my face is sort of bare. I have like base makeup on because I'm gonna be trying on these products with you telling you my first impressions thus far and remind you to stay tuned for my paid for boxes because that's when I get into the honest user reviews for all of these products. What that means is I go online and tell you what other actual users of all of these products are saying because what comes from my mouth maybe isn't the same for someone with dry skin, someone in a cooler environment, all those good things because I want to give you as many details as I can because I do know some of my babes out there maybe don't get BoxyCharm anymore but you're kind of keeping your eye on the pulse. You want to know what's coming, how things are performing, or should you get the products even outside of BoxyCharm? Because even outside of these subscription boxes, the products are still available for purchase and you want to know the goods too and what to avoid. What to avoid is also just as important sometimes. So let's jump in. Since these are my PR boxes with BoxyCharm, I do need to let you know there is a link below if you are curious about signing up with BoxyCharm. I do make a small commission if you do use my link and you don't need to feel pressured to, but it's kind of like tipping your fellow YouTuber for doing a ton of work behind the scenes for you guys should you decide to join back up with Boxy or try for the first time. And I'm going to be reviewing the base boxes and the premium boxes. The base box is $25 a month and the premium box is now a separate box. So you don't have to have the base to get the premium. They can be two totally separate boxes, which is nice to know because sometimes you want maybe what's coming in one box, but not the other. That is awesome. Let's start with the theme of this month because it kind of goes with my birthday theme guys because if you are new here or you missed my last video you may not know this is my birthday month so I'm kind of just celebrating all month long because why not we've had a few rough years behind us and now why not celebrate anything we just can so the theme of this box is invite only how cute is that and so you know you're all invited to my birthday series all month long because really I'm just celebrating in every single video. Feel free to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell so you don't miss out on my uploads. And feel free to just follow me on Instagram because you will get a lot of behind the scenes information. Yes, on BoxyCharm, but other things I have coming in. And I've actually been doing a touch of shopping outside of BoxyCharm too. Some lifestyle things and some makeup. So I'm so excited. Also, we just had the Mega Drop Shop yesterday. I think still going on today when I'm filming this. And I did do a little shopping. Some things I've already had, some things I want more of, some things are going to be new to me. So if you want to know what those are going to be, hang tight to the end of this video because I'll let you know what I got then too. Grab your tea, grab your snack, get comfy because I am a chatty girl and these videos tend to be longer when we're applying them and getting ready together. Cheers! I'm going to say, let's start with the base box, shall we? My PR base box, I'm curious how different it's going to be also from what I get that I pay for because that one is tied to my personal account and I'm really curious if I'm going to be getting the same things. I've not gotten to try these yet and I'm not going to be trying these on camera because I have some other things I am trying today and last night. So this is going to be upcoming in my monthly video later in the month. These are the Vitamasks, the Nourish Flower Next biodegradable mask and glow juicy berries biodegradable mask I know not a ton of people like sheet masks for a variety of reasons some people don't like how they feel on their skin some people just prefer you know to go into a jar put it on your face but also sometimes it's the waste so what I do enjoy is that these are biodegradable 
The retail on these is 18 bucks. I can tell you they feel kind of hefty. So I am really intrigued to try these. So stay tuned and I will give you an update on these in the future. But I had a bunch of other things that I needed to focus on for this first impressions video. Yes, you know when it comes to some skincare or cleansers or things like that, my husband Adam also is taking one for the team always because he's always interested in what I've got. And we've both been trying. This is the Kate Somerville Goat Milk Moisturizing Cleanser for $40. Adam was like, it's a goat's milk cleanser. What does that mean? And he tried it and he was really impressed with how thick it was. He said, you don't need a lot. And I would totally agree with that. And it is a thicker consistency. It's very milky on the skin as you would probably guess it would be. And it really does feel really nice. And I feel like it leaves my skin feeling nice and soft gentle daily face wash that's formulated to cleanse and soothe without tightness or irritation. It's done a good job so far with just day-to-day -day washing and taking off makeup, so definitely stay tuned, but my first impressions, initial thoughts of this are I am enjoying it, and so is Adam. This is the next hefty guy that I wasn't sure how I would feel about it, and I also wasn't sure how Adam would feel. Now, this is first impressions, so we need more time with certain things like this, but I actually think this may make me want to use a toner more because that seems to be the thing that falls off my radar or falls off my routine if I'm like in a pinch or kind of slowly works its way out of my routine. This is the Glow Oasis Milk Dew pH Balancing Moisture Milk Toner for $34. This is a very hefty product and it definitely has a glass packaging which is super nice. And you can see that the liquid in here is super milky looking, right? It's definitely a bit of a thicker liquid than I was expecting. I don't really know what I was expecting, honestly, but I had never had or tried a toner that had this type of consistency, which is a little bit more milky, a little bit thicker, which definitely calls back over here into this product. They're saying that this is a toner meets moisturizer, which now that we're coming into the cooler months, that's kind of a nice thing to have. Plus it's supposed to be a deeply hydrating, conditioning, and soothing to the skin product. I have used it last night for the first time and then this morning after my shower, and I like how it's kind of this creamy, liquidy, like texture and then when I'm rubbing it into my skin it doesn't just feel like it's just kind of like dissipating or going away it actually feels like it is working into my skin actually giving me some benefits so I'm really curious to see one do I keep using it in my routine out of wanting to or if I notice anything different with my skin because I already am noticing some things with my skin and I'm not sure if some of it is with this or one other thing that I'm gonna be telling you about from my premium box, but I am noticing like a brightness with my skin. I used it last night, like I had mentioned, and again this morning, and I'm still liking how my face looks like it's got some like nice brightening to it. I love that in the winter months because that's when I feel like my skin can look dull and it can look really tired. So super excited about those pieces. Now let's talk about some makeup. One of the only pieces of makeup I got in my PR base box for Roxy this month is something that I tried yesterday. So I'm probably going to be using this with a little bit of something else today and seeing what I can get. But I wasn't sure how I'd feel about this because this brand, Violet Voss and I, we have never had a long lasting relationship. You know, we've kind of courted. We've seen each other from time to time here and there, but somehow there's always some kind of distance between us. There's nothing that ever really keeps us together. So let's see how this does. This is the Violet Voss Violet Sunset Eyeshadow and Pressed Pigment Palette for $37. It calls this the Violet Sunset Palette, a color story inspired by the magical colors of the sunset. Your eyes are sure to be the main attraction. It's got a mixture of mattes, shimmers, and metallics. So this is something I was swatching up the other day on my Instagram for you guys and for this video just to give myself a little bit more of an idea because when I did use these shadows just the other day, I kept it more in that rose gold family. I used some of Desert Sand, Amber Sky, Champagne, and I believe I used vanilla all over the lid and maybe a touch of peach, but I hadn't really gotten into this bottom row at all. So when I was swatching it, I was really impressed with how things were pulling, how things were layering on themselves. So I am intrigued to play with this more. Now I've said a lot. Pinks and purples aren't something I naturally gravitate to, so I'm curious how this formula will help me with that because I am impressed with these shadows so far. There's maybe a couple of things that were still standing out to me. Like this vanilla shade is shimmery. Cause like at first I kind of thought it was matte just looking at her in the pan. 
and she looks okay on the lid. I'm not like super impressed because it kind of just blends to nothing, but that was all I needed that day. And then there's other shades in here like Champagne and Peach that I was kind of like, are these gonna be too repetitive considering they're all in this smaller palette? But then when I started kind of playing with them, I did see some differences, but not a ton, but they're still kind of nice, so I'm still gonna play. I do wanna say this palette feels approachable. It does feel approachable. I feel like I could start with a more neutral look and then add some color to it if maybe color is a little intimidating for you. So I did like that. And the formula for me with Violet Voss has only been like, okay. I know some people love it. So if you are a lover, I get it. This is not an attack on your friend here, Violet Voss. It's just something that maybe isn't the best for my skin type all the time, or maybe just the way I like to do makeup. So I'm curious how this will play out. I did enjoy playing with it yesterday though. I did notice it wearing down a bit, but again, you know, time will tell. First impressions only at this moment. And then this type of product is kind of polarizing. For me though, as soon as I saw what they were and the style they were, I got excited. These are the Lily Lashes Falling For You style that are $28. These are lightweight and flared. They're also airy, like an autumn breeze, as they say. They're part of their limited edition Falling For You line. And I actually liked how they are flared here on the side. That seems to be a style I've been reaching for quite a bit this year, at least this fall. And I noticed a lot of you guys saying in my comments, you enjoyed this style on my eye shape, which I didn't know like years ago when I've tried this style, if I would like it. But I definitely feel like it's definitely part of that fox eye trend that kind of like elongates the eye. And since I do have such round eyes, I find I can sort of reshape my eyes with makeup and lashes a bit, which is just fun to do from time to time. Like we're shapeshifters, <laughs> but don't tell the villagers because um, they will call the church. So that was my PR base box. Now I'm going to move over here to my premium invite only box. And this starts off with a bang. Let's get into her. This is the Persona Cosmetics Identity 2 eyeshadow palette for $42. Now I was looking at this color story and I will be a hundred percent with you. This took me back like a year. This was a flashback for me, but not in the best way, just upon looking at it, not even touching it yet. Some people love this palette. And if you do again, that's totally cool. I, I wanted to love her so much, but that New England autumnal hues palette from, was it Iconic London? Super pretty. It's just that formula did not look good on me. It did not wear well on me. It didn't last on me. So totally different brand, but the packaging and the color story totally was like the same in my mind. And it gave me a hard core flashback. And I was like, oh no. But then I was like, wait, it, this is a different brand, different brand, B breathe, breathe. So I took a sip, you should too. And I have played with her just a bit. Now I will say, I thought this was gonna be a very approachable palette to day-to-day -day wear for a quick Zoom call, something like that, maybe something a little less colorful if you wanted. And then I actually started getting in with the shadows and then I found myself going, well, it gets colorful pretty quick because you've got just a couple neutral shades up here. It's just like these top three and then everything else seems to be a bit more colorful. I did come down here into Brave and I have swatched Resilient and I think that's pretty too. A lot of these swatch gorgeously like this gold shade. Yummy. The, the green shade here is just so rich. It's so beautiful. There's a lot of richness to this palette. So I'm hoping to get a little bit more colorful today and kind of see what she can do along with the Violet Voss but the color stories aren't exactly the same. So I got to get a little creative to try to use them both. Something else that instinctively, if you know me, you're probably like, oh, Nicole's going to hate that. And my first instinct was to say, oh, I kind of think I'm going to hate this, but I have tried it and I've tried it more than one day. So that means I haven't thrown it in the garbage or out the window yet. These are good things. This is called growth. These are the Rodile blush drops. Is it Rodial? Rodile? I've heard it both, both ways, to be honest with you. Um, these are 55 zero dollars. They say they enhance skin's luminosity by adding a healthy flush of color to the complexion, a concentrated drop to, to provide a buildable, illuminating pop of color on the cheeks. Oh, deep breaths, ladies. And I will try this on with you. I have gotten this far today with my makeup so I can apply the things that I did get for makeup and we can discuss. You can see me apply them. I do have oily skin and big bossy pores. 
big bossy pores and I feel like right now as the winter has kind of like shifted here in Florida and we're feeling those cool days and I know it's fall not winter I keep saying winter though because it's like it's 50s in the morning here and we don't do that here freaking me out and my skin so we're, we're gonna see how she does I've tried it a couple days now and I don't hate it right now but this brand for some reason is just I've gotten so many of the Rodial drops that were illuminators I got like I got it like two or three times in boxy and I was like stop it no more so I, she found me. She found me. Let's we'll get into it. We'll do it. Something though that I am saying, I think I noticed this morning. I don't know about yesterday morning, but this morning my under eyes looked much brighter. And I did try this. I don't want to say last night though, because I tried something else last night. I want to say I tried this two nights ago. This is the Better Skin and Co. I bright now for $38. This is a wake up and fight dark circles and puffiness with a bright eye new serum. Helps with the appearance of puffiness and dark circles. I tried this in the evenings one night and I didn't notice any breakouts because that's where I kind of first have to go with sensitive skin. And then I kept like allowing the play to develop, see how things went. And this morning I was like, oh, my face is looking good. But it could have been a few things that I've been talking about here. You know, the toner, the face wash. And also, I was a little excited to get this, but also a little intimidated. I'll be honest, but I have used it once and it confused the heck out of Adam when I had to talk him through how to use it too. So we'll get there. This is the Nude Sticks Lemon Aid Detox and Glow Micro Peel. Micro Peel. This kind of intimidated me at first, honestly, and it's worth $34. This product super fascinating. I've never tried something like this before. So when Adam was reading the descriptions, he was like, what, I, what, how do I use this? And then he read the directions and he was like, apply as a mask all over your face, finger massage to peel for two minutes and then rinse off with water only. He goes, what does that sentence mean? Finger massage to peel for two minutes. I was like, you just, you know, kind of work it into your skin. And he's like, but what does it mean to peel? And I was like, so it starts peeling off, I guess. And I'm still thinking, a different type of peel because this guy gets it's it's so interesting to me I've never done one of these so you like apply it right and then you start rubbing it in and it feels gritty and it feels grittier and it's still getting grittier and you just keep going with it I, I was like why is this feeling more and more gritty until all of the sudden like out of nowhere you could see it start peeling up it's definitely peeling you see all of this it's peeling on the skin. So I did it first to kind of like demonstrate. And then you do that for like two minutes. Can you see all of the peeling going on and all of the peeling happening here? Yep. I've never done something like this. It was super fascinating to me. <laughs> so there's that. So this is something else that I was like, my skin's looking pretty good. Oh, what day did I do this? I feel like I did this two nights ago. So like this morning, I was really liking how my skin looks. So again, there's a lot of different things at play here, but everything looked bright this morning. Everything was looking so balanced, brighter, healthy. So not mad about any of these skincare pieces, although <coughs> boxy, more makeup, more makeup. We talked about this, but you know, Promises were made. 2022 is coming. Make it happen. But I've never had a peel like that. So that was really interesting. And then Adam did it and he said he liked it. Um, again, kind of his skin's kind of like mine. So we kind of want to give it more than just a first impression, but letting you know, he's also very sassy. So if he really hates something right out the gate, you guys know, he tells me, and then I tell you also sidebar entirely from this video. I have had him going through our skincare collection in our tiny beauty space saying, what do you not use anymore? Why don't you like it? And I'm hoarding stuff over here that also I don't use, he and I both don't use, for an upcoming declutter. Stay tuned. All right, now I got two other things. One thing I'm really liking, another thing that I'm just kind of like, but why? Like, why? 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 Something I do like, because I want to put it on now, so I'm going to do this one next. The Girlactic Rose Oil Petal Gloss for $20. This is a long-wearing lip gloss that is infused with natural dried rose petals. Literally. Do you see the rose petals in here? Cause I do. And at first when I saw it, I was like, this is like a test tube. It's like a test tube with stuff in it. Is this sanitary? And then I started using it. A light scent of rose, super light scent. I do not smell it a ton. And then it just kind of like coats the lips. It doesn't run all over the place, which I very much appreciate because I kind of like to gloss up or 
juice the lips hydrate the lips while i'm doing the makeup especially as it's getting cooler outside but i don't want it to mess up my foundations my mouth my makeup my powder all this stuff you know so so far i'm liking this i've only recently like as in the this morning started recognizing there is a rosy scent in here but i'm not too sensitive to smells so i feel like it didn't bother me much but i know when there's an overwhelming scent of rose some people love it some people hate it i could do without it but this doesn't bother me at all and i like that it's a thicker formula because it just like coats the lips it just complements them to help them feel hydrated and like not dry not not like super like oh it's 50 degrees in the morning in florida why why no first impression on this i like it using it not mad about it we gotta talk about something though i'm so confused on this next thing that it's distracting me it even got question marks and it calls itself the riddler essentially so maybe it's confused too this is the riddle oil Like, it's got a question mark. There's a note on here that says it's new brand Tabaxi and is a Riddle oil, an original roll-on oil worth $50. Five zero for this little, what, what are you? Like, what are you? Made with simple ingredients of amber and musk, the original roll-on oil smells clean and subtle. This oil naturally creates a signature scent that is unique to you. The original scent is excellent for people who don't, it's called the original. That's why I keep saying original. The original scent is excellent for people who don't generally like fragrance or suffer from fragrance related headaches. So if you're sensitive, this could be up your alley. Rest assured when you roll on your original fragrance, it is hypoallergenic, non-toxic, vegan, and cruelty free. So I'm all about learning about new brands. I'm all about trying new stuff. I feel like this is going to be pretty polarizing when I can get to reviews. There aren't any reviews yet because it's too early in the month. And I truly don't smell much at all when I do this, but I do smell like a light musky scent. I'm going to do it. I'm going to roll it on here and we're going to see in this tiny beauty. So it, I, you know, when you live tiny, you have to be super selective with what scents you bring in both Adam and myself, because it's small. We live really, really small, obviously living in a tiny house. So if if one of us doesn't like the scent, essentially whatever it is goes. Like Adam's had hair products before I didn't. I was like, what is that smell? And he's like, I got a new hair product. Do you not like it? Like we have to be mindful of each other because we, we in it, we in it together. I'll be honest, it still smells extremely light. I can see how this is probably made for people who are very sensitive to scents, but really want to have a scent. It smells almost soapy a little bit to me. Musky soapy, is that a thing? Maybe it's starting to fuse in with my body. So I tried it on very quickly when I got all of this to start some things. And then I washed it off because I was like, I already have my perfume on for the day. So I'm going to see how this develops on my skin since it's supposed to be personalized to me kind of thing. So, you know, work with your body's own chemistry type thing. So let's see. Right now, like my first impression wasn't bad, but it wasn't like, oh, this is a scent I want to smell like all the time. So I'm curious. I'm just going to let this sit on my body. We'll, we'll play this out through the video. We'll get there. So now we're going to get into the portion of the video where I'm going to be trying on more stuff with you. I've already got on some of the things like the skincare I've already done and the glosses, stuff like that. So now let's get into this blush that I stopped my makeup to start this intro so we could do this. Let's do this together. Let's, let's, let's get in it. Right, so we are going to get ready for these blush drops. I have put on foundation. I have on foundation, concealer, and I only, and brows, and I only did powder literally under here because I'm way too darn expressive, especially in these intros to not have on some sort of a powder, but I left the cheeks totally alone as best I could, but I'll be fully honest with you. I am a girl of habit. I'm a creature of habit. I will probably always, unless something changes down the road for me drastically, be a creature of habit with foundations, concealers, powders, and then move on. So, because I'm not much of a cream girl, being big poured and oily skinned, so I have put this product on top of powders and I was not disappointed in it. I did not think that it pulled, oh, I just got a whiff of that perfume or oil, whatever we're calling it. I just got a whiff. Again, not a bad scent, just not something I would be like, oh, I wanna smell like this all day. Back to this. I had it on top of powders and it really blends well. It doesn't pull the powders. It doesn't pull the foundation. It actually did surprise me, but I do know about this product. It is 
very illuminescent. So I've not found myself wanting to put on like much of a face highlighter after this because it's that illuminescent. Give you an idea. You, and I also learned you have to just do a little dab. Little dab will do ya. And this, this applicator is coated. So a little tiny dab here will do ya because it spreads so far. Like you're never going to run out of this unless you really cake up your blush slash highlighter. It spreads far. So let's do this. I think I'm going to do one at a time because what I had been doing is like doot doot and then trying to rub, but then I feel like one will dry a little faster. So let's just do one at a time. Go here, do one drop. I don't want to say that this even um, accentuates texture for me and I do have texture on the front part of my face. Okay, so since I don't have any bronzers or powders on, and I have done this, like I said, with powders before, I feel like I could do another drop because it's so subtle right now. I just mostly see a luminescent. I don't see much pink. You may want to use this as more like a topper too, like after you do your blush. If you want more rosiness to your cheeks, kind of depends on the way you like to do your makeup. But do you definitely see that luminosity? Oh yeah, I can see it in my viewfinder there where it, it gets very highlighty. It's like a pink highlighter almost, but I've not done it in this order before where I did this down first and then bronzer. So I'm wondering if I'll need to still add blush because I don't know if I want to add more luminescent stuff to me because that's, hmm, maybe I like doing it more with my powder bronzers down and contours down first because I was thinking as far as like applications go liquids then powders and I had never gotten the opportunity to do this with all liquids first and then powder on top but maybe it's going to be too subtle as far as a blush goes now because I do notice a little bit more color at least when I'm doing this on top of powder now I almost wonder because like I could see the rosiness and the illuminosity but now I need to put down like my face powders and bronzers so I'm really curious if you're even going to be able to see anything, let's just kind of like play it out really quick. Okay. So I have added a decent amount of bronzer and on my face here, I can still see some of the light rosiness up front and definitely some luminosity. And I think you can pick that up on camera too. So it really kind of depends on how you like to do your makeup, what styles, things like that. I did just a little bit of the Becca soft light blurring powder in the shade pink haze, just to kind of like go over the top of it to give a little bit more rosiness because I'm not a big blush blush girl, especially not with the way the trends of blush have been going just to kind of like allow some of that luminosity and little pink vibe to still kind of shine through without adding more of that product or a different blush. And I think I like the way it's kind of like helping everything settle down as we know, kind of with our body chemistry and heat, we kind of let the powders kind of do their own thing. So I think I'm going to add just a little bit more of the gloss on right now, just because I've been using a lot of powders, not because I feel like it's done a poor job of maintaining its hydration because it really feels nice. I'm really liking this so far. Okay. We're pulling the hair back to get into these eyeshadow palettes. I have no idea what look I'm going to do. Literally none, but we have the warm sunset vibes from the Violet Voss palette. We've got some pinks. We've got some purples. We've got some neutrals in here and we have the identity Two palette from persona cosmetics. I was really excited to try some of their shadows because I love some of their lip products, but I honestly don't think I'd ever gotten to try their eyeshadows before. And like I said, the first day I went into it, I kind of found my brush feeling a little intimidated to go into some of the bolder shades. I was kind of looking for something neutral to ease my way into the formula to see how I felt about it. So we're going to just play with makeup. Let's just do it. I'm going to start with kind, which is a matte creamy shade here all over the lid. This is the part where I open up everything, set them down and just let the palettes speak to me. I think I'll go into loyal here with a clean blending brush for kind of a transition shade for the crease. Decent amount of fallout when you put your brush into the pan. 
that's not necessarily a bad thing and not, nothing I really hold against palettes when I use them because usually that means they're pretty pigmented and should do a lot of good things on the eye. But it's something to make note of because it can be messy and I am seeing some fallout on my face but nothing too dramatic. I do like this neutral loyal shade for the crease because I feel like it's very natural. If you are a babe that really does like a natural look and you don't want to go into the variety of bold colors in here or you just need something easy to use this palette with, this is a very easy transition shade you can build up. I've definitely been building it to see how it lays on itself and the color tone it creates and I do like it. You could just do something like this and then put one of these shimmers on your like lid if you want and go over here into the violet Voss palette with desert sand it's a similar tone but it's got a little bit more of a purple base to it so it can get a decent amount of fallout when you tap off your brush yeah this definitely has a little bit more of a purple tone to it so i'm just kind of doing that lower i feel like the first shade i used wasn't very patchy but this one's a touch patchier maybe it's my skin maybe it's the palette still kind of playing some of this is my eye and I know it is but like in this inner corner here where I've been applying that purple shade the brown shade did fine but the purple one is definitely skipping more with my skin so I just kind of need to work that in a bit more I'm gonna dip over here into brave it's a brown chocolatey shade not a ton of fall off on that one though well maybe it builds up it does build up Worried this is starting to look a bit muddy. This desert shade in here may have made this look a little bit muddy. I kind of want to just see. We've got confident purple shimmer shade. We've got this empowered purple shimmer shade from the Persona Cosmetics palette. And then in the Violet Sunset palette, it's got this really vibrant pink purple tone here that's got some iridescent properties to it. I'm just kind of wondering which way I wanted to go now. I'm worried that this is looking a bit muddy, so I'm worried this is just going to accentuate the muddiness if I go darker. So I'm really thinking maybe I should go a little bit more vibrant and give the Violet Voss a little bit more attention right now, just to kind of see if we can liven this up. did like the swatches of this yesterday. I thought they were really pretty. Just really hoping it doesn't fall on my face. And since that desert sand shade kind of made this look kind of muddy up, I'm just kind of curious if I can save it with the same palette or if this one's going to have to be in a declutter soon. I am already having my wheels be turning over here. I'm kind of layering this just to see how she does, and I think it's layering pretty nicely. And I really don't see much fallout on my face, which I'm pleasantly surprised about. Okay. Let's come back into the shade Loyal with the Persona Cosmetics palette because this is a nice neutral tone. Kind of like give a little bit of flair down here. And this is a nice um, transition shade that I can trust because I don't think I can trust the other one that got splotchy muddy on me from the Violet Voss palette. More of a precise flat brush here and I'm kind of thinking about going in independent and doing like smoking out the lower lash just a touch down here to go with this darker eye look. I don't know, is that gonna be too much? Cause for me, it seems like, okay, purple might be the natural look or maybe a brown, but if we wanna go a little bit more full, get a little out of our comfort zone, maybe we'll just tap here into independent. And if we hate it, we will do something else. We'll fix it. <laughs> Please don't fall all over my face. Please don't fall all over my face. Now I kind of want to just like smoke it out a bit. I'm just kind of buffing it so it's not such a harsh line. It's got some softness to it. You want to be less harsh. It's actually blending pretty nicely. So I like the purple, but I'm also feeling like I need a little bit of a wake up and I'm trying to decide if I want to go into this champagne color that I like with the Violet Voss palette and just do the inner eye or should I just leave it all purple? I'm actually going to take while I'm thinking about that the vanilla shade that I told you is kind of like, it's got some shimmer properties to her, but she's not very opaque. I'm going to take that with a smaller fluffy brush and I'm just going to go in there and do the inner corner. Waking up that inner eye. Because I feel like that desert sand shade kind of fluffed everywhere and got muddy, I'm going to take 
Kind, which is that neutral shade from the Persona palette, and just kind of like clean up some of this area under the brow and kind of give it a little bit more structure again. I do this sometimes when a powder can get a little too fluffy and just travel a lot and just kind of give yourself some of that <laughs> look a little less messy, give it a little bit more of a polished look again. I still feel like I want to go over the top of this purple. I don't know if I just don't think the purple is giving me its own moment right now or I just kind of like the look of a champagne moment on the inner corner, but let's just see if they'll lay on top of each other because they are from the same palette, so I hope they do. You can even keep patting it down and it kind of blends together to create your own shade. Oh, I like that better. I'm not touching the outside. I'm just kind of like starting in the center, starting in the corner and just pulling it. So I still have the purple on the outside, but a little bit more of that lighter transition in the like, center and in the corner. And I think I like that better. So now I'm going to do the lashes really quick and I'll be right back. Okay, I have popped on these lashes and I have to say it was much more complicated and more finicky than I was anticipating because I was really excited about the style because they seemed really thin, wispy, but they still had that angled look that I have been loving lately. However, because it's such a thin band, I really struggled to get it on my lid where I wanted it. Um, and my technique is usually to just use my fingers and tweezers that works best for me I do have other tools that I could use but they're just it's not the way I like to do it it's not the way I can ever get it to work so this I took a couple tries this one only took once but they were very it's a thin band so it's just kind of like trying to get the placement right and because the lashes are so thin and wispy you don't have a lot to hold on to so there is that but I think they're nice they're a little bit more natural but give you some flair to them so that way it does kind of like dress up a bolder look like this but it's not a lot, whereas I think this eye look could have definitely gone bigger if I needed to. And I was a little like when the wispies are on there, they look nice. I just kind of wanted a touch more, maybe just a touch, but they're good. I like them. So as you can see, I kind of completed the look, did a little bit of lipstick. I did pop back into the Persona Cosmetics eyeshadow palette down here in the black shade Limitless with a very thin detailed brush just to kind of connect where the false lashes kind of go to the corner of my eyes just to kind of complete the look so there's no gap. Sometimes I feel like just that little extra touch can really give the final look like a completed moment but that's really all I did there and the black worked really well. I liked that. I look overall actually looks pretty nice. I do want to play with some more of the colors like that really vibrant gold shade here in the Persona Cosmetics palette. Um, this independent shade down here really smoked out nicely and I feel like it's a great accent for this like fall time but it doesn't overwhelm so I do want to play with some more of these shimmers over the next few days and weeks and see how they apply and how they do. I do like some of these matte shades too so I, while I was kind of concerned about this wasn't very maybe approachable upon first glance I think the formula is actually pretty good at least so far for first impressions so I want to keep playing with this and for this Violet Voss I have like this is how I felt about the really big palette that I got from Violet Voss uh gosh what was it last year in a luxe or a premium box it was huge and I know so many people loved it I ended up decluttering it after like months of trying to make it work because I felt like some of the shadows for me personally were inconsistent I felt like they were kind of patchy and I did discover some of that with desert sand today but I like the champagne shade I do like the violet sunset shade I do feel like it wears down though I'll be honest I have already noticed like the crease and the shimmers on my lids kind of slowly wearing down through filming through kind of doing other things I do give myself enough time while I'm filming these to kind of like see how the shadows settle. It's not all just one and done in 30 minutes, 40 minutes, however long my videos are. There is a lot of behind the scenes work. So I do think they are already wearing down and I wore this palette yesterday and I noticed by like late afternoon, some of it in the crease kind of looked a little choppy, a little less blended. Now, was that me being super particular all up in my, you know, mirror? Yes. It's not like anybody, you know, looking at me would notice the difference, but I noticed a difference. And my eyeshadow palette collection is pretty serious for living so tiny. So I always have to kind of like be really 
a little hard, a little um, particular on what I keep in my beauty space. So I do want to keep playing with this though, because I do think it's got a lot of potential. I've just never been super wowed by Violet Boss shadows. And I know some of you feel that way, some of you don't. So I'm really intrigued to see how this works for me in the upcoming days and weeks, but I'm not mad at this eye look at all today. I think it looks pretty and it was a combination of these two palettes. So I'm pretty happy with how the eye look turned out, lashes and shadows. It's been a while since I put on these blush drops and I'm still not mad about how this looks on my skin. I don't think it's adding to the texture on my cheeks, but I don't think it's also kind of helping it because it is so illuminescent, not just a blush, but also illuminating. So it's a little like when I look at certain angles in the mirror, I'm like, ooh, there's those big pores. There's a little bit of a roughness. But then when I turn my head, it still looks smooth. So it's just, you know, a liquid product. I'm usually a powder girl. So I don't know how long this is going to last in my beauty space or if I'm going to find myself reaching for it. But like I said, I have been using it three or four days in a row now since receiving this box. So we shall see. Oh yeah, I never even told you. The shade I got was Sunset Kiss. I don't know if there's a variety of shades going around, but that's the shade I got. And it does complement my skin tone. I think it does really nice. And I do still see like the rosiness of the cheeks. I do obviously see the illuminescence, you know, the highlighty look to it, the glowy look, but I do see the rosiness. So I do appreciate that about this product. So I'm not, not mad about it. Still digesting first impressions, still thinking about it, but I really thought I was going to hate it hate it, hate it. And so much product is on the dropper. I was concerned, but I like it so far, so far. Also like this Girlactic Rose Oil. It's the Rose Oil Petal Gloss. I didn't even honestly take this off. I just kind of like let it wear down while I was doing the rest of my makeup and it still stayed pretty moisturizing on the lips. It has like this nice, I want to say like thick ish layer that it adds to you, but nothing that's moving around something that just kind of hydrates. So I did just kind of put on my lip liner like over it and then put on my liquid lipstick and a gloss and everything's applied just fine. Everything's been great. So I really like him playing this, but I do like Girlactic. Anytime I do get something from them, most of the time I like their products. Okay. I do smell myself like not a lot. It's not like, well, that sounded weird, but I don't like, it's not an overwhelming scent, but I do have some like perfumes that I like to smell like during the day. So I was just kind of sitting here for a second while doing my makeup, doing things. And I was like, I keep getting a whiff of it. And to me, it still smells like what it smelled like originally. It didn't like shift tones or smells for me. And it's okay, but it's got a little too much of a musty scent that I don't think this is something I'm going to want to reach for. So this I may end up just seeing if somebody else likes the fragrance and pass it along. I feel like scents are more personal even than makeup sometimes because some makeup can be, you know, wow, what a great opportunity to try this. And maybe you can use it several times to really decide this works great for me. This doesn't work for me or, oh, it works like this. Since it's kind of polarizing, it's like once you're in it, it's not gonna like, there's no other way to apply it. <laughs> I mean, I guess there is, you could layer it with something else. Um, but you know what I mean? It's a little bit more of a personal thing. So I've never been a huge fan of getting scents in my boxy charms. I have gotten a few though, that were good, like a long, long time ago. I am liking these face products. I know face products, I can only give so much of a first impression of, but I definitely want to see how these, oh, hi Penny. These are the type of products you need to use a lot longer. And I know a lot of people are kind of like overwhelmed with the amount of skincare we've been getting, which I am too. That's why there's going to be a declutter coming something very soon for you. Um, but these, I'm actually pretty excited to see how they're working with my skin. Like I said, my, my skin this morning was bright. It looked really nice. I liked trying this nude sticks peel. I think it's really, like I said, a day later, I was noticing how good my skin looked. But when you get so much of it, you're like, which is doing which? So it takes more time and the under eye brightening corrector as well. And there's some face masks that I do need to try out. And now really quickly, I'm going to share with you guys what I got in, is it called the Mega Drop Shop now? What I just got yesterday. So some of you guys know, I personally liked, and I let you guys know in my Halloween special, my husband apparently has been stealing some of the Kate Somerville Exfoli Kate 
the glow moisturizer that's like a retail of 70 bucks this was in the drop shop for 10 so i did pick it up essentially because my husband keeps stealing it so i think that means he likes it he's been using it kind of in his rotation not daily but throughout the week so we're already like halfway down i also enjoy it so i ended up picking up more of this also i have been in want of face setting sprays i'm a girl who enjoys a good setting spray and I still stand by what I said in my Halloween special. I hope in 2022, BoxyCharm, listen to what we want. We want some Urban Decay All Nighter. I don't want, I, I don't want a variation. Just give me the standard All Nighter setting spray. I will be happy as a clam. Love that so much. And I ran out of this Tarte Maracuja Miracle Mist setting spray that I had got in one of the pop-ups a while back and it was called pop-up then so I'm getting away with calling it that which is so much easier to say. I loved that. I didn't think I was going to like it as much as I did. I got that for 10 bucks so I repurchased it because I was like I'm in want of things that aren't dewy or glowy or all the things that I had been getting. Like I got too many dewy things in here. I've already got enough luminosity going with all the other stuff you give me. Thanks. I also um, got another set of the Fleur de Lashes Looks lashes. I told you guys that I felt like the one that were also angled kind of like this, but a little bit um, more to the lashes that I feel like I've only been able to use so many times and it's already kind of like thinning out. So that is a set that I ended up getting for three bucks, three bucks. It's another duo set. I think one of them's called charmer. One of them's like Foxy maybe, but I really liked those styles. And for three bucks, I was like, why not? I know I like that. Also, I've told you guys, I have fallen in love with this formula from Huda Beauty. This is the Demi Matte um, liquid lipsticks, but it's so pliable, so flexible on your lips. I got another one in another shade. Penny and Cooper are just having their row right now. Ignore them. And I also got something I've never tried, but I've heard things about. I got the Huda Beauty Matte in Metal Melted Shadows. I got it in a more nude shade because I thought for some fun fall looks, I could maybe use it for a cut crease or do it all over the lid. It's just something I hadn't gotten to try before and I wanted to for, I think it was like eight bucks. Yeah, eight bucks. So I was pretty excited to try that as well. So I'm excited to see that order come in. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you happen to be new to my loud, weird, crazy, unique channel, hi, new friends. I really hope you take a quick moment to hit that subscribe button down below so you don't miss out on all of the upcoming videos I have coming. Like I said, I am waiting on my paid for premium box today and other things, like I said, declutters are coming. Bye friends.